Hi, and welcome to GCP Demos. The first one, we're going to take a look at storage. Here's a project, and here's a list of services. Now I'm going to search for storage. And I'm going to create a bucket. I'm going to use multi-regional storage. And this allows you to stream uh, videos and host web content. You can use it for data access all over the world. It's the premium tier. Because I'm in Australia, I'm going to select for the multi-regional location the nearest region, which is in Asia at this time, and click Create. And now I'm going to upload a file. Now the file's uploaded, and it's available for me to work with. I've opened the gCloud shell, which is integrated. This opens up a virtual machine that runs the cloud SDK, and I've run gCloud dash dash version to verify the version. Now I'm running a gCloud command gsutil, and I'm listing my buckets. Or in this case, I should say, my bucket, because I only created one. There's some other tools. There's a web preview. There's a file browser. And there's an included code IDE. So you can see inside of here, it has the various files you've worked with. So this is just from another project I did using containers. And it's a YAML file for working with Docker and uh, Kubernetes. Now I'm going to select a different type of storage, Nearline. So this is a cheaper version. It's really simple just to pick the version you want, make a new bucket. And this is for called warm storage. I'm going to select Asia again, click create. Open up the shell again, and I clicked a button on the upper right of the web console to open the shell. Run gsutil list, and now I should have two buckets. And notice this is specific to the project, which is called Galaxy Oz. Now in the next section, I'm going to look at virtual machines or Google Compute Engine. So I'm going to go ahead and search for compute in the console, create an instance, and then I have a form to fill out. I'm going to select Asia again. Notice the price is shown, which is really useful. Unlike some of the other vendors, I can customize. I don't have to know machine types. I can just say what I care about, which is how much CPU and how much memory. And then the price shows me. And then click Create. Virtual machines are super fast. Note the time. And I'm in Australia, and this is being created in Asia. And it's going to take one minute, which is pretty darn fast. Really useful. So I have included tools. I don't have to deal with keys or anything. They're automatically transferred. I have an SSH client. Just really nice and fast. And now I have, you know, SSH capability. Now I'm going to show you more virtual machines because that was a kind of a basic one. I'm going to create a new instance. And in this case, I'm going to change the operating system, and I'm going to use something other than Linux. Notice we have different flavors of Linux, but I'm going to pick Windows, Windows Server 2016. Uh, notice that I can have a uh, SSD or a standard persistent disk for my boot disk. Again, I have integrated tools. 
I'm going to RDP to this, but I have to set the Windows password all nice and integrated in the console. So fast. And now really handy if you click on RDP, I'm just using the Chrome add-in, which is a free download. So I have a Mac, so this is a really nice, easy way to work with Windows machines on my Mac without installing a bunch of software. So here I'm opening the shell in Windows, and gCloud is pre-installed, which is handy for instances that run on the Google Cloud. And now I'm going to disconnect out of my client. And I'm going to create another VM. And this time I'm going to pick an application image. And you'll note that in addition to Windows, there's hosting for a SQL Server. There's also hinting. You can see that it needs to have four CPUs. So the warning will go away as soon as you fix that. And uh, notice that I didn't pay attention to defaults, and I put it in the United States, even though I'm in Australia. And I'm setting the Windows password. And while this is coming up, it's the enterprise version of SQL Server 2016. Google just announced support for availability groups and all the advanced features. So this is not just a toy thing. This is production workloads. And here I'm going into my RDP session again. And I'm going to open up my tools and connect to SQL Server. Another thing I've done with this is you know, used it for quick evaluations because it's so fast and cheap. So, for example, here I'm connecting. You might know that uh, Microsoft bought Revolution Analytics, which is uh, Enterprise R, and they're integrating Enterprise R, which is an interesting use case. So I actually used this with a client because it was quick and cheap and easy to spin up, and then I uh, added the R features and tried it out. So it's good for quick prototyping. So there we are. It's really simple. Next thing is BigQuery. This is a SQL Query as a Service. So when you connect in the regular console, you go to a new console. This will eventually be integrated, but it was it's been a separate product. It's been around for a long time. So you pay by the query. So the idea is you have queries and then you have jobs for loading. So use standard SQL. This is from a use case I had in the bioinformatics community where we're looking at variants in the genome. So differences. And then you have the ability to look at um, job explanations and information so you can optimize just like you do in a regular sort of SQL world. The cool thing is it's super fast, serverless. So four seconds, two gigs of data. Um, and again, I'm, I was running this from my hotel room in Australia, so super fast. And there's the explanation details. There's uh, 261 million rows, again, four seconds from a hotel room. And this, you know, is running in the U.S., so when you get a data center here, it'll be even faster. And you have a bunch of options around pricing. So if you're running variable workloads, you can do batch pricing. So this is simpler than some of the competitors where you have to do spot and reserved and all that stuff. Um, you can set maxes in terms of billing and limits because you know you plug it in and query it but you are paying for it so you can in this demo we're going to take a look at the beta of cloud spanner it was released today february 14th uh, in the u.s or if you are where i am in australia february 15th take a quick look search for spanner and you'll have to enable the api first which i've already done And notice fully managed mission critical relational database for transactional consistency at a global scale. So ACID, transactions, SQL, syntax, automatic synchronous replication for highest availability. We're going to create an instance and add databases. So I'm going to call this demo Sydney, because that's where I am. And for a configuration, I'm going to select Asia East 1 because that's the nearest data center to where I am now. 
I'm going to select three nodes and here's my performance guidelines. Notice I have um, each spanner node has a number of QPS reads or QPS writes and the amount of storage is two terabytes per node. And Google recommends provisioning enough nodes to keep overall CPU utilization under 75%, three nodes for production, and the performance is dependent on workload, schema design, and data set characteristics. Here's my cost, 270 per hour. Storage cost is 30 cents per gigabyte a month. And I'm going to click Create. And now I'm going to click Create Database. And I'm going to call it not Northwind. And then I am going to click Continue. And then I'm going to define my schema. So add tables and indices to define my schema. Uh, we can add a table here. And I'm going to call it Customers. And I'm going to add a column. Of course, obviously, you could do this with a uh, script. So I'm going to say name and I'll call it string. And then I'm going to say done and add another column. I'll say ID and I'll call it an int 64 and done. And then I'll add a time and I'll make this a timestamp and done. And then I will continue and I'm going to set my primary key on the ID and then I will add the table. And then I'm going to click create. And then inside of here, I am going to click query. Then I'm going to say select star from customers. And I'm going to run query. Of course, I won't have anything in there because I didn't put anything in there yet because there's no records. And then I can go in here and I could put an index on if I wanted to. So I could put an index. I could call it IDX ID. Continue. And let's put it on the ID. Might already have one because it's a primary key probably does, but I'll just, just show you how to do it. And continue, and let's see, we've got store data from another column, interleave, force uniqueness, uh, we'll do a unique, and create index. And you can see this is, looks like a hot update. And we've got the DDL here, that's cool. All right, so now this is done. Let me just play around since this is a new service and see what else we've got here. So we've got a monitor thing. Okay, that's like all the other Google stuff. Um, we've got some permissioning here. Okay, let's see if there's anything. Oh, cool. So we have spanner permissions already. Nice. Cool. Well, I'm excited about Spanner. I hope you are too. Lots more to do with this. Um, but this is a very quick look getting started. So Google has two things in machine learning. They have generic hosting TensorFlow models and then they have specific APIs. And this is running through a tutorial around vision. So the first thing is, these tutorials are kind of cool. You just click it and it's going to clone um, code into your own repo. They have Git repos. So this is showing you the simple way you work with the API. You authenticate, you construct the request, which is you basically call annotate on the image, and then you uh, parse the response. So it's, it's uh, as simple as pass in credentials, call the method, and then, you know, uh, process the response. So kind of black, black box-ish. This particular implementation is, is classification, so it's labeling. So it's um, labeling images, identifying. And Google is, you know, has this um, focus on productizing machine learning. So they have 
they have a number of APIs that they've released this year. So if this is a use case for you, you're going to want to you know, follow what they're doing here because they're releasing more and more of their functionality this way. This is just an example. So they're, they're parsing and then you're going to go back and we need to uh, enable the API in, the, in Google Cloud. Some APIs are turned on by default like storage, but most of them aren't. So you have to go to the API manager and enable the particular API you're working with. Of course, you can do this programmatically as well. Click the button, and then we're going to go back over here. And oh, once we enable it, And now we're going to go back to the shell and we're going to clone the repo that we looked at locally. And then we're going to just do all this in the uh, shell. And then we're going to just change directory. And then we're going to, oops, we're in our directory there. Then we're going to get some credentials, use a service account. So G Cloud does have IAMs similar, but not the same as their competition. So users and groups and permissions. And now we're going to test our app. So we are going to call it, but before we do that, let's look at our image. And of course, it's going to be a cat. So there's our image. So the idea is the, the machine learning algorithm will tell us what is in this picture. And we're going to call it. And da -da -da -da, it's a cat. Found label cat or resource uh, cat. Now you might say, well, the name of the file is cat. We could change it because it is classifying the image. The point here, though, is the send the stuff, send your information in, call the method. Uh, credential and process it out. So a quick preview into some of the uh, things going on with Google Cloud. This is Lynn Langett.